All right, got my eighth badge. I am all set, but as soon as you leave the gym, Professor Juniper will be there, and she'll tell you how to resurrect Zekrom or something. Uh, she couldn't quite figure it out, and she, uh, she tells you you've changed a lot, and she'll show you where you need to go next. Since now I have eight badges, I need to go to the Pokemon League, of course. And that means I need to wander through Route 10, get to Victory Road, and Juniper even tells me where to go. She even kind of drags me along. Um, okay, so... Do you regret setting out on your Pokemon journey? Um... Yeah, I do, kinda. Uh, you don't have to tell me everything. Uh, but I'm very happy you chose to... Or you three chose to train Pokemon. Devin, this is a present for you. Devin obtained... Ah, a Master Ball! Oh my goodness, that's just what I always wanted! Um, that's actually quite excellent. So that is... Actually one of the two Master Balls in the game. The other one you can only get if you've traded with... 50 unique people. And that's in Castelia City. Um, so, oh, now as you try to go through this gate here, the lady there, the person there, she tells you that there's a suspicious storm that they heard about on the uh, cross transceiver there on Route 7. Well, that's peculiar. Hmm, sounds like it's time to investigate that. So I'm going to go fly on over there, and I'm going to do this before I head on to Route 10. Now, what this is, this is actually, um how you can get one of the other legendary Pokemon. You can get a different one depending on which version you're playing. If you're playing Pokemon White like I am, you will be able to catch Thunderous from this little event thing. And if you're playing Pokemon Black, you'll be able to catch Tornadus. Now, you need to go through Route 7. I think we're shining a bit. <laughs> Weirdo. Um, so as you can see, it is just like massively storming and downpouring and everything here. My my, that Pokemon is coming again too. So as you try to pass by that house, the old lady will, uh, she'll pull you in for some soup. Uh, I kid you not, she wants you to come in for a spell, and you can't refuse, so why not? Uh, okay, so, this is cozy. Um, I remember this place. Even a youngin like yourself will catch a cold if you get soaked by that ring. Sit right down and have some soup, will you? Oh, sure, Grandma, I love soup. Why not? Oh, there's a Pokemon called Thunderous that creates thunderstorms. It makes wild storms and lightning. Have some soup now, dear. It'll warm you up. A soup jam-packed with healthy vegetables. It's delicious. Wow, pizza's now a vegetable, so I'm sure it's extra delicious. Um, yeah, so this thing can fly really fast. Now, this is important. In the mornings, it's in the south, and in the evenings, it's in the north. Um, it's up here in the evenings. What this translates to is, you can only find it, um, well, I'll tell you in just a second here. Because, as you can see, you're about to run into that thing. Now, you're not going to fight it right away, but it is going to fly down from the skies and taunt you. Again, depending on which version you're playing, it'll be either Thunderous, if you're playing White, or Tornadus, if you're playing Pokemon Black. Um, and then it just makes a storm appear. But, it will dissipate after just a few seconds. Bizarre. So, I'm going to fly now back to Mistralton City, and I'm going to show you how to catch it really easily in the north. Um, that means if it's evening or dark out, this is where you're going to be able to catch it. Otherwise, you'll want to go to Nimbasa City and keep going in and out of Route 5. Uh, you know, the gate between there. Just the one little gate will do it. So basically, you just walk right back and forth between the edge of that route. I know it looks a little silly, but just trust me, this is what you want to do. Now, you want to wait for it to fade kind of a bluish color, an unusual color, and then you want to head into the tall grass. Um, unfortunately, I did not find anything in this uh, little experience here. You're not guaranteed to find either Thunderous or Tornadus, but as long as it's storming out like that, you do have the possibility of finding it there. And it's a pretty good possibility too, it's not like a 5% chance thing, it should be like 50% of the time or something it seems. It seems like reliably enough without repels or anything you can run into it. I'm just getting relatively unlucky. However, with each Pokemon you encounter in there, there's a chance that after the fight it'll take away that that thunderstorm, so you need to start over again. But it's basically just a process of running back and forth 
across the border of that route until it kind of fades blue. You can even start to see it fading blue, but you want to make sure you're watching for it just in case you're not paying attention and you're running back and forth across that border really fast. I mean, it's not like the end of the world if you miss it. But if you do this enough, you will eventually find it. I'm just being exceptionally unlucky in my search for some reason. Um, if you have a Pokemon at level 39, you can go ahead and use a Repel or something, and that will keep any other Pokemon away. I find it's not that big of a deal, though, so, you know, it's really up to you. Um, I think having a higher level Pokemon that's more likely to strike first is important because you're going to want to weaken the darn thing once you run into it. Now, you'll know when you find uh, the Pokemon you're looking for because it has an awesome entrance like that, and of course there's the music. Look at that smug thing crossing its arms. Um, so that is Thunduris. That is one of the, uh, the legendary flying Pokemon thingies. Now, some people call them the genies, because they look kind of like genies, but they're actually based off of some Shinto mythology, uh, Japanese kind of mythology. Um, and they're based off of Fujin and Raijin, like kind of god spirit thingies of, of storms or wind and, and thunder. Um, now, one thing you want to keep in mind is you can use your Master Ball on them if you want. That is acceptable, it's fine. You do not need to use it on your version's big legendary, the thing you see on the box. You don't need to use it on that, because they're really easy to catch. Um, since these guys are a little inconvenient, it's a fair use of using the Master Ball. There's nothing really beyond them you need to save it for, because these things are equally hard to catch as, say, well, theoretically Mewtwo. They have the same catch rate. Now, a lot of people suggest using something with mean look or block or something, or spider web, in order to prevent it from retreating. Here's the issue I have with that. You then have to train up a Pokemon, if you don't already have one trained, you have to train up a Pokemon for maybe 20 or 30 levels just to be able to catch one Pokemon. That is not really the best use of time. Just trust me. As long as you can weaken it enough, and as long as you save your game beforehand, and as long as you can afflict the status condition, even that's not necessary, you should be fine. You should be just fine. Just toss quick balls at it, because they have, like, an awesome catch rate the first time you run into it. Um, and that's obviously what you want. But don't really worry about block or spiderweb or, um, or mean look, because that strategy, as nice as it sounds, the Pokemon that learn these things just are not really good for catching them. So just try this out. Um, oh wow, nice. I caught it in one quick ball. That's pretty good. They can be relatively difficult to catch. Don't let that fool you. But, um, as long as you weaken it properly and afflict it with a status condition, you should be good. Now again, if, um, if you were playing in daytime or, or the morning, you're going to need to go to Route 5 and do all of that. But anyway, here's mine. It, uh, comes with a prankster ability. Ooh, naive nature. That's actually pretty good, I think. Um, that makes it so any of its non-damaging attacks have a higher priority, so they tend to go first. Um, unless they're facing against other attacks that would go first normally. So it can, it can say, set up a tailwind or do something, well that one can't, but it can do all this stuff before any attacks are used, and that can be kind of convenient actually. Keep that in mind. Alright, well, we're gonna head to Route 10, make our way to Victory Road on the next episode of Maryland's Pokemon White Adventure.